A shock wave just hit the global automotive industry. For years, experts believe China will be the first to dominate the self-powered car revolution. But against all odds, it's America that just pulled the trigger first. A new fleet of self-powered EVs has rolled out on U.S. soil, vehicles that run without traditional charging, without gas, and without limits. And now, the world is asking, how did the U.S. beat China at its own game? The race no one expected the U.S. to win. For over a decade, China positioned itself as a leader in EVs, flooding the market with affordable electric cars, building the largest charging infrastructure on Earth, and controlling the majority of global battery production. The narrative was clear. If the future belonged to EVs, then the future belonged to China. But in late 2025, a quiet but groundbreaking announcement shattered that belief. An American tech startup, working in partnership with engineers who have been inspired by the works of African innovator Maxwell Chikambutso, revealed a self-powered EV technology that bypassed everything the industry thought was necessary for electric mobility. The technology behind the shock. These new U.S. self-powered cars didn't need a plug-in. No charging stations. No downtime. Instead, they relied on a hybrid of wireless ambient energy capture and a self-recharging drive system, a breakthrough that allowed the vehicle to continuously sustain its power while in motion. The implications were enormous. No reliance on lithium-ion battery imports. No charging networks required. And most importantly, a complete disruption of China's dominance in the EV supply chain. For the first time in years, the U.S. had a genuine technological leap ahead of its biggest rival. The immediate reaction, news of the rollout hit like a thunderclap. Washington celebrated, hailing it as proof that America could still lead in innovation. Beijing was caught off guard, scrambling to understand how the U.S. pulled ahead. Global automakers rushed emergency meetings, realizing this could render billions in EV charging investments obsolete. Financial markets reacted instantly. Oil prices dipped. Tesla stock soared. And investors began pulling money from traditional EV makers into this new wave of self-powered car companies. The first fleet on U.S. roads. Within weeks, the first small fleet of these cars appeared on U.S. highways. Futuristic, minimalist designs glow with an almost otherworldly aura. Drivers reported the experience felt like freedom on wheels. No range anxiety, no gas bills, just endless driving. It wasn't just an innovation. It was a statement. America had beaten China to the future. The tension builds. Behind the celebrations, however, a deeper tension began to brew. Was this technology truly scalable? Could China replicate it faster than America could mass-produce it? And most importantly, who really controlled the intellectual property behind this breakthrough? Some insiders whispered that the origins of the self-powered system traced back to African labs and forgotten prototypes, meaning the U.S. might not hold a monopoly it thought it had. China strikes back. The shock in Beijing quickly turned into action. Within weeks of the U.S. announcement, China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology convened a secretive summit with its top automakers, BYD, NIO, and Geely. Documents later leaked revealed one chilling phrase on the agenda, reverse engineer, replicate, surpass. China's vast research ecosystem kicked into overdrive. Billions in emergency funding were funneled into advanced energy labs, and whispers emerged that Chinese engineers were already testing their own prototype of a self-powered EV, one that could potentially outperform the American version, the global chessboard. The arrival of self-powered cars created ripple effects across the globe. Europe panicked. Billions invested into charging infrastructure suddenly looked obsolete overnight. Germany's Volkswagen called the U.S. move a dangerous disruption to global balance. Oil-producing nations braced for disaster. With self-powered cars, the end of oil wasn't just coming. It was accelerating. Saudi Arabia, Russia, and OPEC met urgently to discuss how to slow down the rollout of this technology. Africa, surprisingly, found itself at the center of the story. Analysts pointed out that the roots of this breakthrough could be traced back to Maxwell Chikambutso's early experiments. Suddenly, the continent was no longer just a resource supplier. It was a birthplace of an idea that could define the future, the White House gambit. Sensing both opportunity and threat, Washington moved decisively. 
the U.S. government announced a strategic national program to mass-produce self-powered vehicles on American soil. Factories that once built traditional EVs were being retooled overnight. Tax incentives were unleashed. And President's fiery speech made headlines across the world. This is not just about cars. This is about freedom. Freedom from oil, freedom from foreign supply chains, freedom from past. The message was clear. America wasn't just competing. It was declaring dominance. Shadows of conflict. But behind the scenes, intelligence reports hinted at darker moves. Cyber attacks began targeting U.S. EV startups. Hackers traced back to China were accused of trying to steal designs. Meanwhile, private investigators discover mysterious shell companies quietly attempting to buy into American firms linked to the technology. Even more unsettling were rumors that not all Americans supported the shift. Oil lobbies and legacy automakers feared extinction and began funding campaigns to question the safety and stability of self-powered cars. The battle was no longer just about innovation. It was about survival of entire industries. The first international confrontation. The breaking point came when China showcased its own prototype self-powered car at the Shanghai Auto Expo. Sleeker, faster, and boasting infinite range, it stunned the audience. For the first time, Beijing openly challenged Washington's claim of leadership. Chinese officials declared, The future of cars will not be decided in Detroit or Silicon Valley. It will be decided here in China. Global media exploded. Was this the beginning of a new Cold War over energy technology? Africa enters the arena. While the U.S. and China clash for dominance, a new player quietly rose from the shadows. Africa. Global journalists started tracing the origins of self-powered car technology back to Zimbabwean inventor Maxwell Chikumbutso. His early blueprints and prototypes, once dismissed as impossible, were suddenly the hottest intellectual property on Earth. African leaders seized the moment. In an emergency summit of the African Union, they declared, if the world wants self-powered technology, it must recognize Africa's role as its birthplace. This declaration sent shockwaves through the global market. For the first time in history, Africa wasn't just a supplier of raw materials. It was claiming ownership of the future's most valuable innovation, corporate espionage. Meanwhile, behind closed doors, corporate warfare escalated. Tesla was accused of secretly negotiating with African labs to acquire rights to Chikumbutso's research. BYD sent delegations into South Africa and Nigeria, offering billions in infrastructure deals in exchange for exclusive access to local innovators. Startups in Kenya, Nigeria, and Ghana suddenly found themselves courted by venture capitalists from both Washington and Beijing. But the competition wasn't clean. Reports emerged of stolen laptops encrypted emails hacked, and shadowy consultants offering to trade secrets to the highest bidder. The global race for ownership of energy independence had turned into a spy thriller. The consumer awakens. As all this unfolded, ordinary people began realizing just how much was at stake. Imagine, no fuel bills, no charging lines, cars that could run for decades without ever stopping for energy. Social media exploded with viral videos of Americans driving coast-to-coast -coast without refueling, of Chinese prototypes racing across highways at record speeds, and of African engineers showcasing garage-built cars that seemed to defy physics. Consumers demanded access. Waiting lists grew longer. Governments scrambled to control the rollout before chaos erupted. The secret meeting. Unconfirmed leaks hinted at a secret trilateral meeting not between governments, but between tech giants. Representatives from Tesla, BYD, and a mysterious African startup were said to have met in Dubai. The agenda? To discuss a potential global alliance for self-powered cars. To decide whether the technology should remain open source or tightly controlled. But according to insiders, the talks collapsed within hours. No one was willing to share power. The race was back on, fiercer than ever. Rising tensions. Markets trembled, oil nations panicked, and the public sensed that this wasn't just about cars anymore. It was about who would own the keys to the next era of human civilization. And then, reports began circulating of something even more shocking. Rumors whispered that the first self-powered aircraft was already in development, a technology that could rewrite not only transportation, but also global defense. 
the skies of tomorrow. The rumors proved true. Just months after self-powered cars at the roads, the world witnessed something unprecedented. A self-powered aircraft, developed in secret by a joint team of American engineers and African innovators, the prototype lifted into the skies without jet fuel, without batteries, and without limits. Military officials gasped. Airlines panicked. Oil executives went silent. Because if cars had already destabilized the global economy, aircraft would obliterate the last stronghold of fossil fuels. The Great Energy Divide. By now, the world had split into three clear camps. The U.S. bloc, mass-producing self-powered cars and preparing fleets of aircraft. The China bloc, replicating and scaling the technology faster than anyone else, driven by state power and industrial might. The Africa bloc, holding moral authority as the birthplace of the idea, and now leveraging partnerships to finally command global respect. Oil-dependent nations were caught in between, desperately searching for ways to remain relevant. The collapse of oil. By 2028, demand for oil had plummeted by nearly 40%. Gas stations around the world began shutting down. Petrochemical giants declared bankruptcy. Entire nations at once thrived on oil well faced economic collapse. It was the largest economic shift since the Industrial Revolution, and this time it was powered not by coal or steam, but by endless energy harvested from the environment itself. A new Cold War avoided. For a brief moment, the world stood on the brink of chaos. U.S. and Chinese fleets prepared for confrontation. Spy wars escalated. Markets crashed. And then something unexpected happened. Instead of destroying one another, leaders agreed to what historians would later call the Nairobi Accord, a groundbreaking agreement signed in Kenya. The deal opened self-powered technology to the world under shared patents, ensuring no single nation could dominate. Africa, recognized as the origin point, received royalties and partnerships that transformed it into a global innovation hub. The result? A balance of power not seen in centuries. The dawn of the self-powered era. By the 2030s, self-powered technology wasn't just in cars and planes. It powered homes, cities, and even spacecraft. Humanity had entered a new golden age, an era no longer chained to oil, lithium, or finite energy sources. What started as a shocking announcement in the U.S., a car that never needed charging, had evolved into a worldwide transformation of civilization itself. The rivalry between Tesla and Maxwell, America and China, oil and innovation, was never just about cars. It was about the future of humanity. And in the end, the real victor wasn't a company or even a nation. It was the world itself. A world free from the limits of energy and finally driving toward a future without boundaries.